Hey guys, I just wanted to thank you for being on my capstone committee. I chose you because I admire you and I am honored to have your support throughout my journey in education. I chose to study empathy because I have incorporated core curriculum in the past and I wanted to see if I could teach students empathy within my program as well. Art instruction helps children with the development of motor skills, language skills, social skills, decision-making, risk-taking, and inventiveness. Why not take those lessons a step further as a way to develop students who are kind, caring, trustworthy individuals who know how to communicate and express themselves positively. My main hypothesis questions were, can empathy be taught? How can incorporating empathy into lessons lead to better connections with students? What lessons and activities can enrich student learning while developing empathy within the classroom? And how can empathy be used to drive differentiation in the classroom? Students are given a getting to know me sketch assignment at the beginning of the school year where they were to create a sketch page about themselves and then create an artist statement for it. That way I could associate the images to their personalities to better to get to know them throughout the upcoming school year. This particular student loves sushi. So she cut out symbols from a wrapper that held her chopsticks to make lantern. She also added labels from her favorite art supplies and placed her artist statement inside a card. In this lesson, we talked about mixed media and this student used multiple mediums to convey her personality. She has her graphing paper from class along as a note, which allows for us to see that moment in time for her life. Another moment in time is captured on a Polaroid picture. Even her artist statement is overflowing with imagery about her life. Students also created self portraits. And by creating them, I had a better understanding of my students and their perspective of what was going on in their lives. To differentiate the lessons for the students who felt as though they were not as strong as drawing, students were also encouraged to create self-portraits that were abstract. The reliquary project is probably one of my favorite assignments that I've given. This assignment allowed my students to open up in such a way that I've never thought could have been possible. The most meaningful moment was when one of my seniors who hadn't spoken much in class told us the importance of his reliquary and what it meant to him. He told us how Marvel movies creates a connection between him and his uncle and how his uncle gave him the necklace. When his uncle passed away, the necklace became a prized possession. This reliquary over here is in the shape of a house and the mountains represented my student and her two sisters. All three of the mountains were different. However, all shared a home. She titled it the three sisters. For the face jug assignment, we talked about the tradition of pottery with faces depicted on them dating back to the Egyptians and how they appear in many other cultures throughout history. In the past, these jugs were supposed to ward off evil spirits. In the early part of the 19th century, this was adopted to appeal to the tourist trade, and in the 1920s, it was often used to store alcohol. The jugs became uglier in appearance as an attempt to identify the contents and to ward off children. Students got to learn about the history of pottery and develop their own face jugs, making a modern and exciting new twist on an honored cultural tradition. With all states, students are able to compete with their peers across the state and participate in several workshops that are set up by professors and college students. 
Hall stayed along with the Georgia High School Ceramics Art Symposium and Governor's Honors programs are so special to students because they allow students to travel outside of their intricate communities and meet students from other art programs to develop friendships and connections that can last a lifetime. There are so many positives that come from these events. Some of my students have been offered scholarships because of them. These events allow them to develop a more social connection, connection and conscious relationship with others while developing their studio knowledge within the program. Um, allowing students to visit museums, they are able to visually connect to multiple cultures throughout history. This allows students to cultivate empathy through curiosity in a safe, trusted platform. I knew that at an early age that the public art was a great way to show social and cultural understanding, artist recognition and appreciation, and overall increased public health. Public art is probably one of the most effective ways one can evoke empathy with the world around them. During my undergrad, I worked alongside the Annette Howell Turner Center for the Arts with the Boys and Girls Club as an art supervisor. One of our projects was to create a 10, 10 foot mural for the new Boys and Girls Club building. Through that, I got an opportunity to become a local YMCA art director. And we too created murals and works of art within the community. Then this allowed me to become a gallery assistant at the Valdosta State University. Art allowed me to become an active participant within my community and afforded me many job opportunities that I would not have if I had not been inspired to create. I tried to instill that sentiment within my students so that they too can be more connected with the world around them. In the past, we have had art shows at local nursing homes. We have participated in the Art Educators Association with the Youth Art Month and were recognized by the following conference for our contributions. Students' art has been shown throughout the states, including SCAD and the High Museum. Students have also designed things like the town sign and they have also created Veterans Day art donations. This particular student over here won a contest for Diabetes Awareness Month. She would later go on to receive a $80,000 scholarship to SCAD the following year. All of these opportunities remain important for students to step out of their comfort zone and experience the opportunity to grow as an individual create long lasting friendships and build connections with their community. This type of philanthropy allows students to participate in acts of community service in hopes that they will continue initiatives like this when they become adults, bridging the gap between them and their community. One of my favorite ways to incorporate empathy within the classroom environment is through group projects. I prefer to link students together who may not know each other as well as a way to build connections within the class and allow students to develop their communication skills. My students pride themselves on making impactful projects. Lessons like the three-dimensional painting projects, students volunteered old clothes, makeup, and belongings to be painted for the sets and the pictures. Creating large scale pieces and groups projects allowed students to come together and work as a united front to make sure that all the team's needs were met. What did I find from the research? I found that there are schools devoted to promoting empathy as part of their core curriculum. And it makes a huge difference in their overall communication and learning skills. But even prisons that promoted reading literature to develop empathetic responses as part of their program to rehabilitate their inmates continues to be successful. That empathy is great for problem solving. In the book, Think Like Socrates, 
One uses deep, thought-provoking questions to further understand the material. Now, same type of questioning is used in cognitive behavioral therapy. Art can be linked to cognitive learning and therapy. Some of our students struggle with things that we can't even imagine. So why not use art to create smart students, but also create students who know how to soothe themselves and communicate effectively with other people. All these studies and real world experiences prove that empathy can be taught and nurtured to create kind, thoughtful, lifelong learners. So was my findings consistent with my hypothesis? My overall findings were very consistent with my hypothesis. Students' assignments became more interest-based, which led to more engagement within the classroom. I also included Socratic questionings in my lessons, along with my disciplinary style, which led to conscious analytical thinking. And to be totally honest, I do not think that my journey with empathy and education has come to a conclusion. I believe that the interpretation of the word empathy is abstract enough that it can apply to several different things within the educational system to the point that I would continue to research and find new and exciting ways to develop it within the program. Just like one does not stop trying to be a great educator, I do not think that I will ever stop trying to find more ways to be empathetic and develop that within my program. Because overall, I think that we as educators do not want to just teach children to be smart individuals. We want to teach kind, thoughtful leaders who can think cognitively, make informed decisions, and become trustworthy adults. Thank you for your time.